Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to J House Radio episode 102. Um, I appreciate you guys stopping by today. I am your co-host, KJ, with the wise man on the mountain. The secret you don't want to tell your mama, Los, is in the house. Um, today we're going to be talking about a few things, guys. Uh, we're going to be talking about Robert Downey Jr. becoming um, Dr. Doom. I, I was about to say Doomsday. <laughs> uh Robert Downey Jr. becoming Dr. Doom and how that's going to affect the MCU, um, its future, and just kind of get our thoughts on like how we feel about it and predict where we think Marvel might go with this, actually. Um, we're going to touch base with some of our PWLs, and we have some Star Wars act like um, news as well, as always. I feel like even though the show is over, there's still, there's still something rumbling about that show for some reason. Oh, plenty of reasons. <laughs> no, seriously, plenty of reasons. Like, like I, I did a, 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 well, tell everybody what the news is on. Well, when we get to it, you're you're, you're still doing the intro. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like jumping the gun today. Nah, it's it's all good. You just you just ready to go, man. Much you know. Nah, you know what? I don't think I've had enough coffee today. <laughs> um, well, since we we're talking about the PWLs, how about we jump into that? Um, what what was something that you wanted to bring up during your PWLs, Los? Okay, well, playing. I'm still. Um, I don't have a lot of time to play, so I'm still playing. Um. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I'm waiting for the new Assassin's Creed to come out, and I'm jumping on that. But I don't think I'm going to buy it for the PS5. Really? I think I'm going to buy it for the iPad. You know what? I saw that um, it is available for the iPad and the iPhone. Basically, anything I on it um, at this point with Apple. Um, and I'm actually, I thought about the same thing. It's so funny you said that. I was like, I kind of want to get it for one of the um apple devices just so i can see how it runs i'm I'm curious well for me it's more a, a a thing of when i go home i rarely have time to play yeah. but i do have a lunch hour that's true and when i pick up my wife from work i usually have 15 to 20 minutes to go mm-hmm. whip out my ipad pull out my controller play 15 or 20 minutes, put it away, keep going. That's so true. That's the reason why I was thinking of doing it on the iPad. Okay. Um, and I can hook up the iPad to a computer monitor, to a TV. So yeah. Am I really losing? Uh, yeah, no, nah, honestly, no, you're not. I mean, I'm honestly, that's kind of how I've been gaming lately. I have a steam deck, which is like a little like portable. Oh, how is that? It's 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 awesome. Actually, I have it right next to me. It's awesome. It's uh it's a little big, but um it's surprisingly comfortable in your hand for the size. And that's what that's the one thing I was worried about cuz I'm used to the Switch basically, you know, I've been using the Switch for years and I'm used to that size. The Steam Deck is definitely bigger than the Switch. And I was worried like, all right, what if I get hand fatigue? What if I'm like I get tired of holding this thing? But when you hold it, it doesn't feel extremely heavy. It doesn't feel clunky. It just feels right. You know, you know what? That is one of the few non-Apple, non-game console things I was thinking about. I love the Switch. I love the form factor. I don't like that it has such a weak CPU. I don't like that it doesn't have a lot of RAM. And I don't like that it has very limited game selection. So you can play a lot of old games on that that gets ported to the Switch, like Assassin's Creed Brotherhood mm -hmm. or Assassin's Creed 2 or Assassin's Creed, basically the Ezio thing. And the Batman Arkham City. You oh, can play yeah, on that. Yeah. But I have those for my 360. Mm -hmm. You know? So, um, Unless you're talking about oh, what was that thing that game everyone's going during great d big on during COVID? Um, oh, Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. Unless you unless you're a big Animal Crossing person, you know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, Switch does have the option to play older games on there now. Like if you subscribe to the Switch Online service, you could play Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, so on and so forth. If yeah. you're that kind of gamer, again not too interested in those games yeah um oh, listen i know they have mortal kombat but i don't want mortal kombat i want street fighter yeah 
you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Street Fighter, and, and that's a thing that's kind of weird. I, I'm surprised. Actually, no, Street Fighter is on Xbox now. There was a point where Street Fighter was only on PlayStation, but now it's actually on Xbox and PlayStation. Uh, we just got to see if it comes to Nintendo now. So yeah, and it hit me. I never bought the new Street Fighter for PlayStation. Yeah, I thought about it. It's it's so funny you said that too. I thought about it the other day. I saw a commercial for like a new a new character that that's coming out. Um, and I was like, wait a minute. I never bought Street Fighter. You know what I mean? And that was something that we were supposed to be doing, you know, for game night. So, yeah, and that was one of that was one of the things we were both like, oh, we gotta get this. We're so excited. Well, yeah. I haven't even downloaded the demo. I downloaded the demo. I, I did play it a little bit. It's it's actually dope. It is fun. Um but yeah, man, we got it. We got it. We got to get it, man. We, we got to get back into like our little game nights at least once in a while, man. I miss that. We will soon. One, one, yeah. cause my wife's getting better, you know, and really that's what stopped us from doing stuff. Yeah. That, you know, I had to always watch her and I've ignored like repairs on the house and things like that. You know, like, cause my front lawn looked like this house was abandoned. <laughs> so yesterday I came home from work and I took care of it and it took like, Two hours. It started to get dark. I was like, "All right, I'm done." And that's how bad my my. I mean, mind you, I, I don't, I don't really have a lawn. When you think of a lawn, I have like twelve by. Is it twelve by twelve? Maybe ten by twelve. A ten by twelve, two ten by twelve spots of grass, you know, and, and a little bit of grass on both sides of my driveway, and that took almost two hours. Ah, uh, because that's how bad it was. Jeez, hey, man, laws laws it got done. That's all that matters, right? <laughs> um, I, I don't, I don't use my lawnmower anymore. What do you use? I use a weed whacker. Oh wow, really? I just oh yeah, because the and then I take my my leaf blower and all the cuttings and stuff shh, out to the street. Easy peasy. That's it. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, get back to the gaming topic. Uh, yeah, I. Honestly, that's kind of how I've been gaming lately, uh, which has been portable. I've been playing a lot of my, a lot of my gaming has been done on the Steam Deck. Uh, PlayStation has, you know, the remote play feature. And I remote play PlayStation from my Steam Deck. So if I don't feel like sitting on the couch or if I'm not home or whatever the case may be, um, I would land in bed. I can literally pull out my Steam Deck. I can play my PlayStation on my Steam Deck. You know what I mean? So mobile gaming is now, not do you even do that from outside like if you're in a cafe or whatever yeah you can pretty much do it from anywhere as long as you have a decent wi-fi signal um but yeah it's just I, I feel like mobile gaming is blowing up bigger than it bigger than it ever has now you have all these mobile gaming platforms just popping up all over the place from you know the rog ally you know you got you know the vol uh evolve uh evolve steam deck basically and just all these different like mobile devices coming out now, and a lot of it has to do with the Nintendo because then Nintendo basically set that pace for mobile gaming now. Now everybody's trying to do mobile gaming. Yeah, so. but but unfortunately, Nintendo does what it always does. It sets the bar, and then lets everyone else kick their ass. <laughs> well, I mean, Nintendo's. I mean, in terms of like, I guess it depends on what games you're into. But no, I'm talking hardware, just hardware oh, just, alone. Just overall hardware. Oh yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah, hardware Nintendo. alone. <clears throat> think yeah, about Nintendo's it. never been powered. Think about this. You have what is it? A ten year old processor? Yeah, I think. Wow, has the switch really been out for ten years already? You have a ten year old processor. You don't have a lot of RAM, right? You don't have a lot of internal storage. Yes, you can expand it. Great, wonderful. But you can kind of get the same thing from a phone. You can get better quality from your phone, Android or 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 Apple, Android or iOS. Yeah. March 3rd, 2017 is when the Switch came out. How many years? Seven is that? years. Seven years. So, I mean, I mean, granted, like ever since then, we've had already two PlayStation and two Xbox consoles since then. And I get it. Nintendo is not about the power. They will never be about the power. Uh, We're not even talking about like having huge power differences. Just yeah. every three or four years, give us a little better processor. Give us a little better RAM. Give us a little better GPU. No one's going to complain. Yeah. I mean, well, the, the rumor is they are coming out with a Switch 
Switch Pro or Switch 2, whatever you want to call it. The rumor is supposed to be coming out next year. That's that's the rumor. Um, I think Nintendo might have even said something that if they do come up with something, it's not going to be till next year. So I'm pretty sure they're still going to stick with the Switch format. Uh, we just got to see if they're going to come out with uh, like like what what is that power going to look like? What is that process going to look like? Hopefully, I'm hoping that they can at least do 1080 handheld, which I don't I'm not sure if it's 1080 handheld now. I think it's like. 900p or something like that handheld maybe something like that um and then at least 4k when it's docked i I think that's everybody's expectation especially since it's been so long here's the thing Um, for me i don't leave it handheld 720 you know um because we don't really have the screens to take advantage of the 1080 mm -hmm. okay i'm okay with that but when you connect to the tv you should be at bare minimum 1080 yeah 4k should be your goal but very yeah. minimum 1080 yeah i mean we'll see we'll see are you are you gonna get the switch too if it comes out next year i won't but my wife will yeah um put it to you this way i'm a little upset i can't find i haven't been able to find my switch since my honeymoon what you can't find your switch I can't find my switch oh, it's in the house but i can't find it jeez louise Maybe that maybe the cats did something with it. <laughs> no, it, it's we we took it out. Um, I think a month after the honeymoon, and then mm-hmm. we put it away f- for safekeeping, and it's real safe because we don't know where it is. <laughs> it's, it's real safe. We don't know where it is. By the Jesus. way, Street Fighter is forty bucks now. Really? Yeah. Oh, we gotta get it, bro. We gotta get. It. Listen, let me know when you get it. I'm going to try to get it, uh, probably not this paycheck, maybe next, either one of the next two paychecks, I'm going to try to get it. If it's 40 bucks, that's actually not bad. No, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. So, uh, but yeah, we definitely got to have like uh, a uh, game night again. Definitely missed that. Um, all right. So my PWL that I want to add to it, uh, the only thing that I really want to talk about was Alien Romulus, which was great, actually. All right. I don't want to say it was great. It was good. I don't know if you plan on seeing Alien Romulus. It got or some you- bad reviews, though. Yeah, I did see some of the bad reviews. Um, I can see why. I can understand why. Um, I, w- I will definitely say the aliens looked amazing in this movie. I will one hundred percent that one hundred percent say that because going into this, I was worried about how are they going to look? Is it going to look corny? Is it going to look cheesy? So on and so forth. But they actually did look good. Um, the cast, I was not crazy about at all the main the main protagonist uh kaylin spaney who plays rain the main character but pretty much like the modern day uh ripley basically okay. uh she was pretty good she was good um she wasn't too bad the rest of the cast outside of um david johnson who plays andy which is like uh one of the cyborgs in the movie uh, which is the first black cyborg that we have cyborgs or android android um First black android that we had, I believe, in an alien movie. Um, amazing actor. He honestly, he carried this film. I feel like if we didn't have him and we had the rest of the cast that we had in this movie, I personally think this movie would have gotten a way lower score than I would have given it, honestly. Um, but yeah, David Johnson, he is he 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 killed it. Like you literally thought this guy was a cyborg, just his performance alone was amazing in the connection oh, between yeah, let me yeah. ask you a question why was it called romulus uh romulus was the name of i believe the uh ship that they went on um ah, okay yeah i believe because so. let me tell you something the alien memes of showing romulans from star trek are <laughs> abundant and really? i laugh oh my god it is so fucking funny wow yeah, it's uh, it's I, I I don't know much about the um the means from Rombolis, but uh, I, I would definitely say that it's the uh, bad reviews. I can see where it comes from. It, it's it's definitely warranted, honestly. Uh, th- this the overall story was okay. Um, there were some special effects in the film, which um, do you remember in the original Aliens, the um, uh, this oh, dang. I think it, yeah, I think it was the original aliens, uh, the robot that they had in there, uh, who like went crazy and just start killing everybody on board. Yeah, um, 
there is something in reference to him in this movie. I don't want to give away too much spoilers, but there is something in reference to him in this movie that a lot of fans are complaining about. Uh, a lot of fans are complaining about special effects, um, which there are some special effects in this movie without giving up too much spoilers that are really bad. And, I, and it's surprising because, like I said, you know, the aliens look great. Uh, the space shots look great. There are just so many other scenes and shots that look great as far as special effects. But there are a few that are so bad that it, it's borderline cringy, actually. my The biggest complaint I heard was the age of the cast. What did, what did they say in reference to that, actually? That um, it was basically like um, that they're too young to be in this type of horror movie. Like they were... Like, whatever the occupation of the characters were made them too young to be in this movie. They should have had some more older people in it. Honestly, I now that I think about it, because uh, I feel like I did think that at one point. I was like, wow, they seem kind of young to be flying this spaceship. Do they even have their license yet? <laughs> you know what I mean? But some did of them did. Good? Yeah. I mean, some of them did seem like they could have been probably like, you know, I, I think the age range seemed like it was like maybe early 20s. Early 20s, 19, you know, maybe 24, the oldest, honestly. But I just think what they're probably, uh, I mean, I, I, I can see where that came from. Because there are some moments where I'm like, yeah, I kind of, you know, it just felt like there was a disconnect as far as the age group and the type of film that we're dealing with and the type of franchise that we're dealing with. It felt like it was a major disconnect. It just, it just didn't, you know, didn't feel right, honestly. So... Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, overall, I mean, I thought the film was just okay. Um, I just, the casting choices really wasn't that great. There were moments where I felt like some of the cast members were just very cringy. Um, but like I said, you know, if, 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 if Johnson didn't, if he was not in this movie, I don't think it would have been as, as decent as it was. I give this, uh, 2.5 out of five chocolate bunnies. Okay. So, um, yeah. Like, this is one of the movies that I'll watch if you ask me to watch it. If you're like, we're going to review it. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> um, I thought about it. I'm not going to lie. I was like, huh, I wonder if I should make a little watch this. But I'm like, I'm not going to do this to that, man. Because I honestly, I can already I can already tell that you're probably not going to like this movie. I mean, I'm not big on horror movies. Uh, I'll give you that. But, um, you know, the problem is the, the last couple of alien movies, the last two alien movies were just trash. Yeah. So that kind of turned me off to the whole thing. Honestly, you know what? I felt the same way. I felt the same way going to this movie. The the last few aliens, last few trail, um, predator movies, they weren't good. This, I would definitely say, even though this one isn't great, I would say this is better than the last few Alien and Predator movies that we've gotten. Honestly, one hundred percent. Really? Yeah. It, it's it's. it's Dude, I stopped watching Predator movies. That's how bad it was. Nah, this, I, I would say honestly, I would say this is at least, at the very least. Uh, what was our thing that we did? Flick it and what? Oh, stream it. This is this yeah, is flick it or stream it. This is 100% a stream it. 100%. Like, if, if this is on HBO Max or Netflix or whatever it comes on to, I would definitely say it's worth the watch. Um, okay. If you're not a die-hard Alien fan, it's not worth spending the money on it because I think it's just okay. And so somebody... Comes- the other reason I can't... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. I was just going to say, coming from me, who's a very big Alien fan, because when I saw that first teaser trailer, I was drooling over it, and I could not wait to see this movie. Coming from me, that that's big. This this movie is just okay. Star Wars Acolyte has been canceled for a season two. I am not surprised. Not surprised at all. Um, I am a little. You're a little surprised? Why? I am a little. I'm surprised that you're surprised. Um, I expected a shortened season two with some sort of conclusion. Okay. Um, that's it. Okay. <laughs> that's it. But I... Like, you enjoyed the series more than I did. 
A little um, bit more, yeah. A little bit more. I'd say a lot more. I'd say a lot yeah. more. Um you you loved um was it soul? Yeah, I actually did kind of like Soul, even though he was a complicated character. I think that was one of the I, reasons why I like I him. didn't like him at all. Um I just kind of felt like there was some either something was missing from the story or something needed to be simplified in the story. Like the tragedy of what happened consumed so much of the episodes that once you finally saw what happened, mm-hmm. you weren't that interested. I can see I can see where you're coming from when you say that. And the other thing is um the whole force choke thing, that's always been accredited to Darth Vader. Like mm-hmm. he was angry enough to do that. And now it just kind of seems that, oh, any Sith or apprentice or acolyte can do it. Everybody's got that move now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like Legion says, you are a bit super fan of the lightsaber, so that's probably why you enjoyed it the most. Oh, yeah, of course. That's literally the reason why. The only reason why I liked it, it anywhere near as much as I did. <laughs> the only thing I did like was they showed how you bleed a lightsaber, a kyber crystal, or whatever they're called, where oh, lightsaber yeah, turns like color to red. I did like that. That was nice. But in the books and so many other things, that it was like a it was like a process. Like you had a you know, meditate on so much hate on the crystal. Now it just seems like I'm angry, red. <laughs> but they also changed whatever the third prequel movie was. Uh, the third pre- prequel movie. Oh, um, yeah. Dang, what was the third one? Well, whatever. I um, yeah. I read an article. I haven't seen it because I haven't looked it up. That mm-hmm. supposedly when Anakin goes to kill the um, the younglings, his lightsaber turns from blue to red. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I then I thought that. to myself, if they did that, then they would have to redo the whole ending. You think so? so really? His sword at that, yeah, his sword, his lightsaber at that point would have been red. Oh, yeah. Blue. That's true. That's true. So I don't know how true that is. You know, maybe somebody said, you know, maybe it should have been this way, but but then again, then Luke Skywalker would have gotten his lightsaber would have been red. Yeah, and that would have literally just changed like a lot like a lot of the story for like the past few years, honestly. Yeah. So uh the only thing I did like was that uh I didn't like how they made Jedi look like weaklings. Um you know, yeah, I, just, I get that. just certain things of it I didn't like. I just really thought that. Um, well, here's the thing. Um, originally, it was going to be 100% taken from a dark side user's point of view. Uh, but yeah. then, um, for some odd reason, uh, Disney got cold feet and changed it and said, no, no, you have to have Jedi in it. You have to have some a uh, huge. Most of the point of view has to be from the Jedi. So then, my whole thing is, why well, call it the acolyte? Yeah, I, I'm really mad that they didn't go that route because I know I talked about it before when we did the review. Um, we don't get a lot of that. We we don't get a point of view from the other side as often. We'll get a peek, we'll get a few scenes here and there, but to get like a full show dedicated to that that would have been amazing i i would have paid any amount of money for that because it's something different it's something we never had before we got close to it in this show but like you said we really weren't following around you know the acolyte honestly i mean i guess you can say that um what's the name is like becoming the new acolyte i guess you can say and the stranger was far more interesting than the jedi Yes, way more interesting. Like I wanted to see more of that guy. You know, it's like we saw him. He, he he went away for like almost two episodes here and there, and just like, where's the stranger at? You you show me this guy. You show his helmet. He's cool. He can fight. He's he's interesting. He carries himself well. You think he's a bad guy, but then is he really a bad guy, or he's just like kind of like a like an in between? Like he's more interesting, and I wish we would have had more on him throughout this show. Honestly, so. I wish they would have expanded more on the Force, where 
you could be a great Jedi, you know, one that's neither dark or light, or you could be uh, a red, Je- a, 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 a Sith, a dark force user, but not a Sith. Okay. You know, yeah, that would have been, that would have been interesting. Right. That I mean, I thought that would have been a good thing. Um, but I think the act, like when it's, when the show got good, it finished. Yeah, I agree. I think I agree. if they would have gone one or two episodes less or done it in chronological order so you can edit out a lot of pieces of it, I think it would have been a much better show. Yeah, I, I think the problem with this show, and I think the reason why it got canceled is because of the major mixed reception. And a lot of the mixed reception is because a lot of people probably felt like this show didn't know what it really wanted to be. It wanted to be this initially but because of the pushback from disney they were confused like all right well i guess we'll go this way i don't really want to go this way but i guess we'll do it because disney said and i don't know i feel like this show kind of suffered a little bit of a identity crisis you know um and the story was the story was interesting but i just think what people thought we were going to get we didn't really get i mean carrie ann moss dies in like the first two seconds and they promoted the Exactly. Ridiculous. They promoted this show as if Carrie Ann Moss was going to be like one of the lead characters in the entire series. And she's in the show for like, even with the extra clips, what, maybe 10, 15 minutes out of all the episodes? One full episode and like 10 minutes in total with the other two episodes? Maybe yeah, three? It's just, yeah, it's, it was just weird. Like, I, why would you promote the show like that? That would have been better off just being a surprise. Like, oh, wow, Carrie Ann Moss is in the show. Oh, wait, she died. Never mind. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> that would have been better off. If that. they would have done it in chronological order where they started out with what happened. Yeah. I think it would have made more sense and made people go watch it. Its debut, it debuted as Disney's highest debuted show. It went wow. from here to quickly. Whew. Yeah, it went down. Yeah, it went down. So, I mean that. That's honestly. I mean, like I said, I there were parts that I. I don't. I don't want to trash it. This show was not. It's not like garbage. I don't want to trash. And and the thing is, is we're not trashing it. We're kind of discussing the flaws of the show because honestly, we both enjoyed it. Yeah. You know. Um. Again, you more than me. Um. Mm-hmm. There were certain episodes I was just like, you know, can we get to the point? <laughs> um, but other episodes were really good, you know. Yeah. Um, we both enjoyed it, but we're talk- we're discussing its flaws right now, and may- we're trying to figure out if Disney made the right decision as we discuss this. Yeah. And listen, the effects were good, the fighting was excellent. You know, it was most of the cast was really good, you know, but there yeah. were just a few things that were just kind of weak. Yeah. Story being one of them. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like I said, I'm not really, I'm not surprised. Um, I would have liked the season two just to kind of, like you said, get some clarity. But um, unfortunately, we're not getting that. I would like to hopefully at least maybe see some of these characters again. I mean, I'm pretty sure we probably will. Um, Mandalorian movie, whatever. I'm oh. pretty sure we'll see some of these characters. Did you see the trailer for the for the Mandalorian movie, the Mandalorian Negroku movie? Is it actually? Did I see it? I feel like I might have saw like a teaser. You oh, have to look at Emergency Awesome because they don't have an officially released trailer. But oh, Emergency okay. Awesome managed to get screenshots of the trailer that was shown in D23. Mm, oh, and okay. He discusses it and he goes through it. That looks to be interesting. I have to check I wish, it out. I wish they would have gone for another season of The Mandalorian. Okay. Because my whole thing is I wanted to see the skeleton crew, Ahsoka, and Mando all together on one mission in a movie. Mm. That's what I wanted to see. So that would be dope. right. That would be dope. And the thing is, Disney switched the focus of their TV universe from Mando to Ahsoka. Mm. So now Ahsoka is the center of the tv universe yeah i think they're gonna use 
I think that because of the big reception they got from Mando, they want to try to use him to revive the movie universe. Well, what's happening is Disney sent out a mandate, a creed, if you will, Mm -hmm. for focusing on movies again. Okay. I think the problem with Star Wars is they have the wrong people in charge of Lucasfilms. You need to have Dave Filoni and, oh, God, what's his name? The one who directed Iron Man. Uh... Jeez, I know you're talking about. I need to be at your you. I see you find it first. Darn it, you're going to find it first. Uh, John Favreau. John Favreau. You need to <laughs> give the control of Lucasfilms to them. Yes, I agree. They are true fans. I agree. One was trained by George Lucas. How the Force works. How Star Wars works. Mm. You know... These two guys love Star Wars and they should be the head of it because they Mandalorian is proof. Ahsoka is proof that they know what they're doing. Yeah. I, you know, Ahsoka was a little more slow, but you never lost interest. Yeah. I will admit. Yeah. Ahsoka was very slow place, but like I was always like, all right, what's going to happen next? Okay, I can't wait to see what's going to be in the next episode. You know what I mean? It, it yeah. was always something that just kept kept you wanting to come back for more, even though it was it was way more slow paced than I thought that it was going to be. Um, but it, I it just, had the pacing of a Star Trek show, yeah, than yeah. it did a Star Wars show. I yeah, you know that's probably the best way to describe it. Yeah, it definitely did feel more like a Star Trek show, honestly. Um, you know. Yeah, there were just a couple weird things. Like, you know, the floor becomes a table. Like, what if you stepped in poop? You know what I'm trying to say? And you smeared it all over the floor. Now or, you're eating on top of poop. Um, but <laughs> think about it. You know, when you yeah. mop your floors, right? You got to mop it more than once. Right? Mop it more than once? What am I, a criminal? Who does Not that? Too. Listen, <laughs> when I mop my floors, I take boiling hot water, throw it on the floors first. I mop mm. that up. Mm. I let that dry. Okay. And then I do one normal mop and another normal mop because I want my water to come out as clear as possible mm. before I call my floors clean. Some people will mop their floors. The waters come out black. They dump the water and they're like, yeah, my floor's clean. No, it's not. <laughs> do it again. Do it one more time. Okay. Let's let, time. At least let it be a few pitches lighter than what it was the last time. Bro, I literally bought this scrubbing machine for floors. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, bro. Oh, yeah. And I, <laughs> I I, do the hot water, then I do the soap, and I do the scrub. Yeah. All over the whole thing. Mop that up. Do it again. Floors are clean as fuck. So if I drop, so if I come to your house and I drop a strawberry under the, on the floor, under the counter, you know, the little crevice, the little nook, under the counter, like it falls yeah. on the floor and it rolls under there. So if it falls under that nook, I can eat it. Yeah. <laughs> as right, long as okay. not in my kitchen, because my, my dogs hang out too much in the kitchen. Oh, okay. I might get some little fur on a strawberry. In the living room, not a problem. <laughs> in my entranceway, not a problem. Bro, I'm out my floors every other day. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. Every Gotta, keep day. Clean. Gotta keep it clean. Um, so yeah. Um, it sucks. Act like got canceled. Um, not surprised. Not not surprising to a lot of people, but it was good while it lasted. You know, can't wait for Mando. That's that. That's all I'm looking Let forward to at this point. Question. Let me ask you a question. Okay, two questions. One, okay. are you sad that it got canceled? No. I mean, it sucks. Like, oh man, I want to see the stranger again. But other than that. I'm not really sad. Honestly, it, it really wasn't wasn't that big of a loss for me because I feel like we'll probably eventually. I, I guarantee we're going to see at least one of those characters from that show somewhere else. At least, at least one of them. I feel like we might. Uh, Legion and Chas, as KJ said, he's going to Los's place. Not if he's going to be seen there because the bunnies he still owes. Yeah, well, you do owe bunnies, motherfucker. 
listen, if I whenever I go to Los's place, I will have the bunnies. Okay. I'm not gonna go there empty handed. Promise I won't. Can't do that. Not if I want to get my Remember, head you had promised bunnies like four times already. I, I I know, I know. But like I said, I, I, I haven't been there yet. And if I do go there, I I will bring it whenever I go there. Promise. Um, this hasn't happened yet. But like I told you guys, I will I will stream it. When I go to Lois's house or whenever the bunnies are exchanged, we will go live, even if it's from my phone, just so everybody can see it, especially you, Legion, just so you guys can see it. And the uh the journey, you know, the 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 long history of chocolate bunnies will finally come to an end. You know, mm-hmm. how do you know I'm not how do you know I'm not secretively just holding it off just because the journey has been fun. Like, look at how many like conversations. Chocolate. <laughs> you like chocolate. Oh, man. I well, remember look- distinctly. There were times at your old job, we would be having coffee and you're like, no, no, I got my hot chocolate. Dude, I know. I love hot chocolate, though. Especially put like white mocha in it. Toffee mm-hmm. nut. What? Oh. Spring, yo, I mean, not spring. Fall's coming back. It's hot chocolate season, man. I'm going to be up on the show with my little cup of hot chocolate. I'm not a fan of hot chocolate unless it's dark hot chocolate. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because I find milk chocolate excessively sweet. It can be. The only milk chocolate I like is from Colombia or Argentina. Really? Okay. Yeah, because I don't know what they do different. Um, Mm. It's creamier, and it's not as sweet. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I I, I usually uh, yeah, depending on what brand you get it from, it can be very sweet. So yeah, dark chocolate, I can totally understand. Yeah. Okay. Second question. Back to the Star Wars thing. Yep. Where would you like Star Wars to go in the timeline to make it better? To make it better. Jeez, that's a very good question. Uh, just as far as like Star Wars in general, not like Act Light or anything. Just Star in Wars general. in general. We're just talking time period. Um, whatever time period it was during, um, not the first trilogy, the second trilogy. So the whatever. original Star Wars. Yeah, basically the original Star Wars. So in like whatever so from Jedi to. Oh wait, no. Whatever Ray was. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I, I would like to, I would like to go back to that time period. You know, um, I don't know why it was just so interesting. You know, especially like you know the wardrobe was just uh, just on a different level at that time. Um, and I don't know, there was just something about that time period that just felt interesting. I want to see pod racing again. Where the where where the pod races? Is that like dead now in the universe? You know, we haven't seen Power Rangers since Anakin. I am completely on the other side. Okay, where are you? I want to see 100 to 500 years after Rey. I want to see a division in the Jedi. To oversimplify it, okay? Jedis who call themselves Skywalkers, Mm -hmm. right? Which are more like Ahsoka. And then Jedi who are like the Jedi console. And then I would like to see dark force users be the same way. Like they mirror. Cause that, that's the whole thing about star Wars. The, they, you know, the lights and the dark are supposed to mirror each other. Yeah. So you have for the sake of argument, uh, dark, dark force users, you know, call them Palpatine for the sake of argument mm-hmm. or Vader's, you know, Vader's. And then you have the Sith. Mm. So you can have conflict between the Jedi, between the Dark Force users, and seeing a Dark Force user, you know, help out the Jedi or help the Skywalkers out yeah. and do something. I think the the name of Skywalker needs to be used differently because I think people are just sick of the family. Yeah, I I think that's what it is. I I'm actually at that point right now too, where I'm just just like I love Skywalker. Uh, I love the you know, I love the roots. Um, but yeah, it is getting kind of like all right. Can we like move on to something else now? You know, I get it. Like this this franchise, Star Wars franchise, has been hanging on the Skywalker legacy for so long, and I get it was built on the back 
and, you know, the the breaking back bones of the Skywalker legacy. I get that that's how it was built. But if we're on this, let's head into a new era. Let's get ready for the future. Let's try something different. I mean, look at look at some of the movies in Star Wars universe that you love. You know, they had nothing to do with Skywalker. You know what I mean? So, well, the thing is, too, they could also like, let's say they go with your plan, right? Where they continue from Jedi. Mm -hmm. Recast Luke, recast Han, recast Leia. Show us some of the adventures. Now that I think about that, maybe that won't be a good idea. Because the Star Wars fans are you know what? hardcore. Hardcore. Here is the thing, okay? Do you know who the Star Wars fans have been dying to play Luke? Who? Oh. Winter Soldier. Really? He looks like a young Mark Hamill. They look similar. Wow, you know what? You're absolutely right. I've never thought about that. <clears throat> They've been asking for him to play Luke. You can have a return. You can have a return. You could even have Anakin show up as a force ghost on occasion. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I forget the actor's name. The guy who played Ben Kenobi could show up as a force ghost randomly. You can mm. show how the Jedi school is built and how his students do things, you know? Yeah. Have it the same trilogy thing. One, two, and three for the sake of argument. And the third one is where uh, Ben Skywalker, no, Ben Solo destroys the the, the Jedi temple. Mm. You know, if you're going to do that. But I kind of think, let's move forward. Let's Let's see the universe change in such a way that is unexpected. I agree. That's actually not a bad idea. That's actually not a bad 100 idea. to 500 years later, two sets of Jedi, two sets of Sith, you know, um, the universe heavily sectioned off, you know, mm -hmm. like this is ours, this is yours, yeah. and, you know, things be different. And if you want to make things interesting, you could even have um, descendants of the original characters show up in unexpected ways. Uh, you could have that a solo. Would... You could have a solo be a governor for the sake of argument. Yeah. You know, Keith Solo, governor of you know Tatooine or whatever. You know, I don't know any planets in Star Wars, so. Um, <laughs> I mean, you could do that, and, and that would be interesting. Yeah. Um. But I just kind of think Star Wars is just beating the same dead horse over and over and over and over again. You know what made. Um, the Clone Wars so good is they focused on so many other characters. Yeah. What made um, oh, what was the name of that? Um, Rebel One mm -hmm. such a good movie is they focused on other characters. You know, what made Mandalorian so good is they focused on other characters. You yeah. Know? And I just kind of think that there is a way to do it where you can keep the feel of Star Wars, you know, but without overdoing it you know and i kind of think that people are a little sick of the same flavor of jedi that that if you add little subtle changes in there you know that yeah. people would enjoy it more they all can't be this perfect monk you know you need to yeah. have variations but not so much like saul saul was just so just a bad choice they made him too needy I feel you. I feel you. I mean, um, I, I, I totally agree that they just need to get into just finding new characters and just going with it. Especially like you said, we saw what happened with Mandalorian. <clears throat> like people, people love that. I mean, granted, they were. I mean, we had Grogu, who I guess you can say is kind of people thought was like Baby Yoda, so that was like kind of a attachment to like the original trilogy. But it's, it was still it was still new characters, new faces. People loved and enjoy. Now we're talking about a movie. They gotta find a way to grab that magic with other characters. Here's the thing: if if you go with my way of moving it 500 years in the future, yeah, you can't have a Mandalorian Grogu still be part of that universe. Oh yeah, people want that. I think I think fans want that. Fans, whatever the Mandalorian series is selling, the fans are buying. So yeah. they could do that. I, I would love to see that actually. Hopefully yeah. you get that 
something so, like that in the movie. So yeah, so th- those are my questions for you about the acolyte, and uh, yeah. I don't know. May uh, it, may just, it, may it rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, but I would like to see those characters show up in different iterations somehow. Same, same. I agree. Um. All right. So um, let's jump into our main topic here before we get out of here. Um, our boy. The man, the myth, the legend, Robert Downey Jr. is coming back to the MCU, surprisingly. <sighs> um, he is going to play Doctor Doom uh, in the upcoming uh, Avengers films. I think we will probably see him before then, kind of like how they did with Daniel. So probably show up in an end credit scene mm-hmm. or something. But yeah, what are your initial thoughts, Los, about RDJ coming back? I'm not very thrilled with it. Not even a little bit? No. Kind of? No. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Okay. Um, here's the thing about it. Okay. Why are they doing it because they're losing an audience or are they doing it because they feel it's the best for the franchise? If they're doing it because they're losing an audience, they might lose a little more because everyone's used to Iron Man and his jokes and his everything else. And Dr. Doom is not like that. Dr. Doom is more like, this he's more like magneto in the sense of like i'm here for my people and i will become the most powerful everything to make sure my people are safe you know yeah. um and he's very spiteful and he's very revengeful and things like that and mm. uh, iron like tony stark in the comics has been a bad guy several times he's been dr doom twice um you know um i just I'm not thrilled with it because I kind of feel like they could have done better. You know? And again, we have been in this spot before where we're like, well, I don't know about this and I don't know about that. And then we turn around and the most amazing thing. Because when um, Chris Evans was announced as Captain America, I was like, oh, they shouldn't have the same actor play two Marvel characters and you know, I'm eating my words later because he's one of my favorite Captain Americas. You know, exactly. what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I had to um, agree. 100%. So I, I'm a little, I'm a little iffy on it. You know, is he a multiverse variant of Tony Stark, where Tony Stark and Doctor Doom uh, got swapped when they were young for some odd reason in the comic yeah. books? You know, or or was it that you know the Starks? Um. W- did his parents get divorced and then his mother took him to let Verdia and got raised by a Von doom and all this. It's like, I don't know, like, where is it going to come from? And I don't yeah. know how well people are going to like RDJ as a bad guy. Those are a lot of great questions. Those are a lot of great concerns. Um, I, I think the main question here that, uh, that everybody's probably asking is, is this a pivot because of Kang you know, uh, Jonathan Majors getting fired? Probably so, because if you think about it, they're replacing Kang. Kang, like, Avengers is no longer the Kang movie. You know what I mean? Yes, um, but So it's Avengers Doomsday. So I think that it's because of that, honestly. Honestly, they were trying to get out of Kang before he had this problem. The people were not reacting to him as well as they thought they would. And yeah. I don't feel it is the actor's fault. I feel like he did an amazing job. Oh, know? yeah. Same. Um, he showed so many different performances in the character. Yeah. Um, and I thought he did a good job. I just think he was... the After Endgame, I feel like Marvel was a little aimless, you know? where they should have used their TV series to introduce the characters and build to the movies, yeah, you know, um, and then have a plan in place. Uh, I just kind of feel like everyone was like, oh, I've got this idea. I've got that idea. Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's do that. We can't fail. Look at how Endgame turned out. And then they didn't realize that that was so successful because how they planned everything. Ant-Man yeah. is a good example of, you know, people were dying to see the new Ant-Man and now they're like, yeah, we're not going to make any more Ant-Man because it was executed poorly. 
Very poorly, yeah. You know, like we talk about the broccoli character. We're like, oh, that's stupid. <laughs> you know? Um, oh, that's stupid. <laughs> you know, or the character's like, oh, I have a mouth now. Like, yeah, you know, there's was just certain good. things that were just really dumb. Yeah. You know? I agree. Um, and, and that's what I feel is hurt the 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 Kang storyline more than anything else. Yeah, it, it was Did the they end it? they put in. Yeah, they ended it very well. They they didn't it didn't feel abrupt because it ended well in the Loki TV series, you know? Yeah. Um but at the same time, I, I really do think they should have done one offs or pair different characters together, you know, like have let's say Ant Man does a regular movie, not this, you know, into the microverse. Uh and they and he you know, I, I'm in Queens, let me call Spider Man, you know, or I'm in Brooklyn, let me call Cap, you know, or something, you know, like where it feels more like these guys can call on each other. Yeah. You know, it just felt like they were like, okay, we beat Thanos, everyone to their corner. And, and, you know, and, and that's the whole thing about it. And are they doing battle worlds, you know, like secret wars two and how come they're not doing secret wars one. And th there was just, you know, how... <sighs> the aimlessness of it, I kind of think forced them to unify behind an actor. Mm -hmm. And that's what drove the RDJ of it all to make him Dr. Doom to make everybody unified. Once again, we have a big bad. Once again, we can go to somebody and we know RDJ is not going to get into the same kind of mess that our other actor did. I agree. I mean, I, he's been, and I think he was wrongly convicted because I'm sorry. He ran for blocks to get away from that woman. Yeah, he did. He did. I, I, I 100% agree. He did. He did what every man would have done. Hey, leave me alone. All right, let me run now. Okay, don't don't chase me. Cameras are watching. Let me run. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the first mistake was dating that woman because she looked like a nut job. Yeah, talk about can we say uh, Amber Heard? Um, so yeah, it's Amber Heard light. <laughs> Amber Heard light. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that uh, it's it was a safe move. Um, RDJ is reliable. RDJ is the reason why they are where they are right now. Like we talk about all the time, we, we would not be where we are right now if Iron Man wasn't as successful as it was. We would not be here, you know. So they're leaning on RDJ to help them kind of revive Marvel back. I mean, I think um, Deadpool and Wolverine was the first step, but it's not gonna keep. Marvel alive for the next five years. You know, it, it keeps Marvel, it pumps some life back into Marvel now. It's like, oh, okay. Marvel's getting a little like life back into them. They're 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 getting a little bit more interesting. Let me pay attention now. You know, because at this point now, Deadpool Wolverine came out, is done and gone. Now the next TV show, Agatha, if that comes out, and if that is poorly received, now we're back to the same. Oh well, Marvel's not that great again. So we we need wait, some. Wait, wait, wait. Don't forget, there's Ironheart coming out too. Oh yeah. So is that a movie or is that a show now? Because last show. I heard it was a movie. So now it's, it's a show. show. But here's the thing: this thing was completed a long time ago. Really? And only now it's coming out. I wonder why. Maybe because of production delays and stuff like that. No. Maybe just no, no, it was completed. Hmm. I it's it's got to it's got to be tired to something else. Maybe it's waiting for something else because you know other movies got delayed and pushed back. So I wonder if that is the reason why they're like, all right, let's wait for Ironheart because we need this to be done. We need that to come out first. Whatever the case may be. Yeah, in the comics, Ironheart's AI was Tony Stark. Oh, I wonder if they're doing something with that. Maybe it was contract Maybe negotiations with that. I don't know. Maybe. Um, that's, that's interesting. When when is when is that dropping? I know it's not this year, obviously. I don't know. I don't know. I I just saw a video about it, and I was like, 
okay, that's weird. I didn't hear that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I don't know. Like I said, uh, Doctor Doom is more of a Fantastic Four villain. Mm. And my question is, is Doctor Doom going to come through to to our, our universe, meaning the, the, the Marvel main universe, because of Fantastic Four, and that's why he looks like Tony Stark? Or is it some other timey-wimey TVA thing? Mm. I think he's going to come. I think we're going to, first off, I think we're going to get introduced to Doctor Doom in some way, shape, or form, even if it's an end credit scene from Fantastic Four. It's only it's it's only appropriate because like like you said that's a fantastic for a villain um i think it's going to be a variant because you know obviously we're in this whole multiverse saga right now which just like deadpool i kind of wish it would just go away at this point which i think after um secret wars it probably will go away um in some way shape or form it'll probably go away um i yeah, think I, I think robert downey jr is is a variant uh, I think he was Iron Man in some other planet, went through some things, went mad, went crazy. I don't know how they're going to spin it in comparison to the comics. We don't really know yet, but I think he's going to just go crazy in some way, shape or form, become Dr. Doom. Uh, previous Avengers are going to see him. They're going to be like, Tony, what are you doing? I'm not Tony. Screw you. You know what I mean? I just think yeah. it's going to go that route. Honestly, I mean, I think that's the best route. I think if they go any other route, I'll be surprised. But we got the Russo brothers, man. And I think maybe that's the reason why Robert Downey Jr. came back. He only came back because he know he trusts the Russo brothers to take care of him, to take care of his character. And if I do come back, you're going to make sure that what I do, the fans are going to love. So I, it's a weird choice. Um, I do feel like it's a desperate move. But I trust the Russo brothers to lead us back to victory. See, I feel it goes deeper than that. I feel it's Marvel has the uh, is has the faith in the Russo brothers. Like you're, you, they're the Marvel Jesus. You know? <laughs> yeah, they like, are. They're the one. Brave. They you know? are. They are. I just kind of feel like that's what it is. You know, especially since Deadpool and Wolverine was. Um, First of all, you know, it's the highest rated R comic book movie in earnings. It beat the Joker. I think I think they said it's the high, highest rated R movie, period. It beat Joker, it beat Oppenheimer, it beat everything. It's the highest yes, rated R movie, period. But, yeah. but in the context of this conversation, yeah, it it is the highest rated R comic book movie. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I just kind of think the faith went into the said, okay, okay, we've got interest again. Let's bring the Russo brothers. Let's make everything good again. But people forget it wasn't RDJ and Iron Man who brought Marvel to the forefront. It was Blade and Wesley Snipes. That's what brought comic book movies to modern times in a modern way for a modern audience for people to love. And is the success of Blade that made Marvel go, well, we gave away the rights to so many of our characters. Let's use our secondary ones. Okay. Iron Man. Perfect casting. RDJ. And then move forward from there. But the credit really belongs to Blade. And that's the thing people don't want to admit. It belongs to Blade. It belongs to Wesley Snipes. When you think of modern comic book movies, the first one that pops into your head, if you're thinking of the, if you tell them, what's the first modern comic book movie that was awesome? You know, mm-hmm. Blade. That's a good point because uh, a lot of people, I think when Blade came out, a lot of people didn't realize that Blade was a comic book movie. They just thought it was just vampire movie, Wesley Snipes, action. All right, cool. I'll go see it. And because of the fact that it just happened to be good, fans were like, I want more. Did something about this guy is amazing. Wesley Snipes did carry that character. If Wesley Snipes didn't train, bust his butt, and wasn't in great physical condition to do the things that he did as that character, uh, that, that movie would not have been successful. And then on top of that, people were like, oh, wait, that, that's Marvel? That's, that's a comic? Hold on. What's going on here? And then, like you said, yeah, that caused people to start opening their eyes a little bit. Like, okay, I guess comic book movies can be a thing. Hold on. You know? Uh, so, yeah, I would definitely have to say that 
Blade walk the burning sand so that way, you know, other comic book movies could, you know, be what they are today. We definitely got to give Wesley Snipes his props. Two is one of the very few movies where the sequel is better than the original. Yeah, I would I would say, well, I personally wouldn't say but it's better, but it's close. No, I personally like the original. I, I love the original. Listen, Blade 2 is has some of the most marvelous, incredible CGI effects. And at the same time, it has some of the worst CGI effects. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> there, there are some um, scenes where I'm just like, like when they like when the, the vampire opens his mouth and it splits, I'm just like, oh, my goodness. Blade was the first time I was scared of a vampire. Blade 2. I've never been yeah, scared of a vampire. Yeah, I, I, I will agree. I will agree. Because there have been some vampire movies like, oh, he looks creepy, whatever. I actually know I lied. The very first time I was scared of a vampire was Bram Stoker's Dracula. The movie scared the crap out of me. Didn't scare the crap out of me. Oh, man. Well, I guess because I was also like extremely young when that movie came out. I should not have been watching that movie when it came out because I was a kid. Um, but that was one of the very few times. The reason the why I, I didn't, I've never thought vampires are all that scary is you can go, you can't come into my house, stay home and you're fine. You know <laughs> I can uh, give you the pizza. I'm good. You know what I'm trying to say? You uh, grab me garlic knot. Pfft, I'm good. You know? Um, yo, no, you did not. He said, I did. garlic I knot, I there. choose you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but oh, Blade man. Two, with these vampires with that gaping jaw. Yeah, that, that was crazy. Unstoppable. May actually like the first time I saw, I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, I will admit that was that was some very good character uh, development or character creation with that one because, yeah, that was creepy. That was legitimate. I was like, "Yo, like Blade might not make it." <laughs> you know what I mean? That was yeah. terrifying. You and know? then Blade Three was made just to set up um the other two hunters in their own comic book movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a shame that never took off because I think that would have been interesting to see that movie. That would have been interesting. It actually would have been interesting. Um yeah. But yeah, I mean this you know, getting back to RDJ, man, I I just really think that this is going to be interesting. And I think starting next year, people, obviously, we're not going to get anything with uh, Dr. Doom this year because the only thing we're getting this year is, um, what's the witch movie? I mean, the witch TV show? Uh, Agatha. Agatha. Yeah, I think that's the, yeah, I think that's the only thing Marvel would be getting this year, I think. Um, but yeah, next year. Uh, people are going to really start peeling their eyes open for Doctor Doom. They're going to be looking for it, you know, looking for any Easter eggs, in credit scenes, because people are dying to see. Okay, when we see the Robert Downey Jr. next, what is he going to look like? Is he going to be Doom? Is he just going to look like Tony Stark and then eventually become Doom? What 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 is he going to look like when we see him next? Everybody's dying to see that. And, and the that, thing that's is, too, traditionally, Doctor Doom does not take off his mask. Yeah, at all. he doesn't. Exactly. So now we're, that's why some people are wondering, like, all right, if Doc, if Doctor Doom is a character that doesn't take off his mask, why get Robert Downey Jr.? Because if you get him, obviously you're going to want to see his face. But if we're not going to really see his face, does it matter that you picked RDJ? You could have picked any, like, you could have picked me to play Doctor Doom. You know what I mean? So Doctor Doom, I think so. I, I think I think I got the voice for it. You know, maybe. Um. But yeah, so that's why, because of the fact that they pick RDJ, I feel like they're going to do something that we're not going to expect. I think they're going to go the Mandalorian season one route, where another actor did all the physicality, mm -hmm. and then someone else is the voice. Yeah, I can see that. I, I think that's what they're going to do. And at one point, he's going to get physically cured from his scars and blah, 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 and take off the mask, and it's... Yeah, I'm curious, man. I, I can't wait. I mean, we got we got the Russo's coming back, we got Stark coming back. I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm really excited. Uh, I'm more curious than excited. The only thing I'm excited about is Captain America. Yeah, I can't wait for. Did you hear that? Uh, Anthony Mackie was. I don't want to say he was upset, 
But he was like, oh, man, it kind of sucks that, you know, when we released my trailer that we also announced that Robert Downey Jr. is coming back. And he felt like that kind of, like, stepped on his shine a little bit. Honestly. It stomped on it. Yeah. <laughs> it stomped on it. He said people, um, especially since the fact that, you know, the Falcon show didn't really, it, it, it did okay. It could have been better. But he feel like now everybody's just talking about Tony Stark. Nobody's talking about Captain America, which literally comes out in a few months. Here's the thing, okay? When Captain America comes out, um, new was it New World Order? Um, yeah, no, yeah, New World Order. No, I think they changed the the, the name. Damn it! IMDb, I choose you. I think it was New World Order. It's something else now. I forgot. See, I feel bad even saying that. Anthony Mackie, Brave if, if New World, listening. Brave New Brave World. Um. Anthony Mackie, if you're listening, I I only I said that because I hate the new title. I want the old title. <laughs> uh, but yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Um, for the first time ever, you're going to have a movie that addresses the others. Understand? Yeah. Where in the Avengers, all the superheroes are Anglo Americans. Hmm. In the point. first one. In the second one. It wasn't until Endgame where we have Falcon. Good point. Then Black Panther, you have another uh you have another African being a superhero, you know. Um, and this is the first one where you have the focus on non Anglo Americans being the superheroes, being the center of attention, being everything that everyone else in Marvel was able to do. So that's another reason why I think this movie is so important because finally the others can see themselves on screen. Now the question is, even though we want this badly, is everybody else going to take it serious? Is it going to... Do you see Captain America, Brave New World being a four a four chocolate bunnies out of five? Yes, I do. And not and not just, could also, be, not just could be wanted to be, but the reception of everybody. Do you see everybody looking at this saying, "Yeah, I gave that four chocolate bunnies. That was a good freaking movie. I'll go see it twice, maybe." I what I see is there's going to be certain people in America. Uh, who are going to, they're the same ones who said a black stormtrooper. I think those people are going to be the most vocal against it, but I think another people, enough people are going to watch it and love it because it still has the end game uh, favoritism. Like you feel it's a continuation of end game. Is that what I'm trying to say? And the Falcon and Winter Soldier was a good show. People who loved it, loved it. And they have told other people to watch it and it's been well received, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think, yes, I think it will be a four to five chocolate bunnies. I don't think it'll be a three. I don't think it'll 3.5. I think it'll be a four because they've put a lot of energy and effort into this film. Mm-hmm. And um, just a simple fact where you can have two communities going, I'm definitely going to watch this because someone who looks like me or my cousin or my aunt or my uncle's in it, mm-hmm. I'm going to watch it. Okay. You know, I hate to use the, the Obama effect, but there were certain people who were like, I'm going to vote for Obama. And they're like, why? I'm like, because he looks like he can be a member of my family. That's why. <laughs> so the first one I'm going to vote him in and the second one or third one, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to think about carefully, you know, like I hate yeah. to use politics into it, but it's just, it, it's like the quickest thing I can mention that certain people were like, "Yeah, you know." But I just think that the trailer's good. It still has the good vibes from Endgame, you know. Uh, it's got Harrison Ford in it, you know. People have always wanted to see the Red Hulk, you know. I think this is this is a definite, <clears throat> you know, has a definite chance of success. Yeah, watching this trailer on mute. You're still like, damn, this looks good. I know it does. 
it, it it really does honestly i i can't wait you know uh anthony mackie getting his time to shine as cap especially since he like tried to fight that name off so bad in the tv show to see him really embrace captain america in his in his own movie it's just it's amazing like when we first saw falcon yeah. show up years ago we never i never would have thought that oh falcon's gonna get his own movie one day i just didn't think that i didn't think that he needed to you know what i mean i just figured it just wouldn't go there you know even though we know what he becomes in the comics i, I just didn't think it would go there in live action so but for him again, really you knew that it would eventually go there i knew it would i knew it would because for years chris evans was talking about him thinking of leaving the role of captain america and I didn't think they would recast it. I didn't think they would recast a Steve Rogers. Yeah. So I knew it would eventually get there. Um, and I liked the actor who was playing Falcon. So I was like, mm, this is going to be good. Yeah. And this trailer <laughs> proves it, man. It's going to be good. It does, man. It does. This, this next year, these, these next two years are going to be interesting. You know, uh, especially next year. Next year is going to be jam-packed. I feel like... It's going to be, we're going to be doing a lot of homework next year for J House Radio, man. We got a lot of movies, man. We got Captain America. We got Fantastic Four. We got, I think we're supposed to be getting Daredevil next year. Um, we have a lot of content to cover next year. I don't know how we're going to do it, but the next two years is going to be a wild ride for us, man. It is. It is. Um, so. I did want to talk about briefly, not in this episode, but in another episode. Okay. About us talking about the merger of Paramount and uh, Skydance and what we think the future of Star Trek is. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, we should definitely add that as like a topic for the next episode for sure. Yeah. A topic a lot of- it, there's not enough information to, to do a whole episode on it. Yeah, yeah. But um, it also explains a lot of what Paramount Plus was doing and blah, 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 blah. But that, that's the next episode. Yeah, yeah, definitely a lot of mergers going on now that I've noticed, but that that's definitely something we can add in there too, with with all these possible merges and cancellations of, of shows and stuff like that. Los, do you have anything you want to leave the beautiful people with before we get out of here today? Uh no, other than uh don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote. That's it. Uh, yeah, that, that that's actually a big that's recommendation it. right there. I think I had to double that one. <laughs> I think I think this yeah. This is going to be a very important election. I don't want to get too, you know, political, but uh, it's a big election coming up, man. It really yes. is. It's a big election. So. Don't forget to vote. Um, don't drink milk if you're lactose intolerant. That includes cheese. <laughs> That's my other bit of advice. Uh, don't eat yellow snow. Um, don't take any wooden nickels, which I still don't know where that comes from. And... Don't pick wooden nickels. That's what I've never heard that. Before. Yeah, yeah. That that's literally from the 1800s about people using counterfeit money. They used to make nickels out of wood. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's one of those fucking random facts that are in my head. Um. Uh, Pat. Okay. The other thing I want to leave the people with is uh, Pat Steaks has one of the best cheese steaks in Philadelphia. Um. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> KJ needs to start wearing sexy shirts again. Um, yeah, I know, I know. Well, I mean, this is a nice sexy shirt. Yeah, that's right pretty here. much it, dude. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Um, other I'll than, um, pray to whatever deity you believe in. I don't care if it's the god of science that I can find some time to actually do my damn streaming show for DJing because I would love to actually get that damn thing off the ground. Yeah, man. and I was actually thinking of doing it on the Thursdays that we don't broadcast. Really? Yeah. So that way, every Thursday I'm doing something. Yeah, I, I think the people would love to see you stream, man. Like, I, I think it's something that we've been waiting for. Like, just like we've been waiting for, like an amazing Blade film. We're, we're waiting to see that amazing little stream. Everybody's yeah. waiting for it. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's guys. everything I want to leave the people with. All right, cool. Other than um, don't forget to change the batteries in your remote once a year. At, at least once a year. At least once a year. 
<laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, that's all the goofiness is coming out of my head. <laughs> all right, guys. Yeah, um, that's gonna be it for another episode of J House Radio. Don't forget, guys, if you're watching this live, like and subscribe on YouTube. Leave us a um, leave us a comment as well. Don't forget to leave us a review on the audio version of the podcast, whatever podcast you listen to, Apple Music, Spotify, so on and so forth. Um, ColecoVision. Uh, whatever whatever service you're using side note random random side note freaking game of former magazine is closed down did you know that no yeah it's it's shutting down game of former magazine is completely done after 33 years it's pretty sad that's a long time pretty yeah pretty sad um physical media is dying um read more books that that's my recommendation read more books you know i know we do everything online do everything on the phones Speaking of reading more books, did you get the Comicsology, the, the Unlimited? Uh, yes, I did, actually. You're reading comics again? Yes, I am. God. Yes, I am. It's, it's, oh. it's, it's amazing. Also, I'd like to say thank you to Legion um, for Four. being a dedicated listener to us, a dedicated Four. watcher. He's such a part of the show, and we thank you very much. You were here <laughs> like... As far back as I can remember, you know, and thank you so much for being part of the being part of the show and with us as an audience member. <laughs>